probably hoped and, and wished, and she has dropped a few hints on us over the years as far as really getting out there with her involvement with the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia as representative of the Board of Managers, and also the involvement that she's had with the National Association of County Governments through NACO. Um, it is important that citizens know what county governments do. I know a lot of times we get into comparisons with cities and consolidated governments can be a, a different animal and not everyone understands the responsibility <coughs> of a county government. In Georgia, counties are truly an extension of the state constitution. So there are a lot of the authorities and powers that you all have that are handed down by the state. So we would like to take an opportunity this year to be able for the very first time celebrate National County Government Month. And this is something that we put out to the departments that they were all extremely excited to be a part of. The theme this year for National County Government Month is Ready and Resilient Counties Prepare, Respond, Thrive. This is right in line with a lot of the emergency preparedness that we do, as well as continuity of business as it relates to if we were to have a disaster here. Um, a lot of the questions that I get from the media whenever they see storm clouds coming or they hear that we're going to have really cold weather is, you know, what is the county doing to prepare? Well, if you waited until the meteorologist has told you that you could be in trouble, it's too late. This is something that has to be an ongoing process. So it's important to create an awareness throughout the year as well as make resources that the county and the state has available to citizens through that process. So we have some proposed activities that have already been scheduled that the departments have started to work on, but we also wanted to give you all an opportunity if there are additional things that you would like for us to add. We can certainly do that if there's something that we have planned that you don't think is a good idea and would like us to not do that or do it a different time we can certainly take that off the calendar um, but we had a proposed proclamation at the first meeting in april which is april the 8th um, then lowndes county fire rescue on saturday april the 19th would like to do a drill field demo i think that's important in highlighting the SPLOST funding that's related to the drill field as well as the combination department that we have with Lowndes County Fire Rescue and the capabilities um, that are there. You know, the public is really excited whenever they see a fire, they see a rescue. I think we're all in the same way or shape, form, or fashion attracted to public safety vehicles, and this is an opportunity for us to make those things available, let people come out and take pictures. Um, you know, our, our young citizens can climb on a fire truck and then talk to a firefighter, and we can have some mentoring there. Then National Telecommunications Week, um, media tours for them, uh, April the 13th through the 19th. Many times whenever we have issues going on, our media would really like to come into the 911 center, which can be a problem on many levels. They're super busy. You all see the, the calls that they answer every day and how many we have going on there. Also, there's a lot of protected information uh, based on the Georgia Crime Database as well as the National Crime Database. HIPAA regulations um, that are maybe on their screens with regards to accidents that have just happened or citizens who call 911 because they need an ambulance. Those are things that we just can't film and broadcast. So we'd like to um, you know, partner with our media, give them an opportunity to come in and get some of that big role in a controlled environment that they can use for future stories, as well as explain to them the process and how we just can't have an open door to the 911 center. The Animal Shelter Open House and Pet Adoption <coughs> event is scheduled for April the 5th. Again, we can talk about SPLOS and the money that's been set aside for improvements on the shelter. Um, I will not get back on my box. I think I did that enough <laughs> earlier this morning about the important the awareness to stressing um, what's going on with the animal shelter. There will be an EMA code red test call. There's not a date and time announced for that because this is sort of like a tornado deal. It's something that is done um, just to see what sort of connectivity we're getting. Again, to know how much we need to educate citizens on updating their information in code red. Um, emergency management is also going to hold a continuity of business workshop. <clears throat> One of the things that came out of Hurricane Katrina was um, an awareness of businesses' inability to get themselves back on their feet. As far as well, what if we had a hurricane and the roof collapsed on your building and all of your paperwork, all of your contracts, all of your computers were soaked in wet and nothing was working. Um, but yet you were in a business that needed to respond to the citizens um, such as the chairman's business, maybe with a heating and air conditioning business. <coughs> How would you protect your business now and prepare so that if we did have a disaster strike, you'd be able to get right back on your feet and respond? So the state has prepared um, a lot of information for that through Georgia Emergency Management and actually has to make that available to our local businesses. Um, and then Public Works is going to have an open house on Wednesday, April the 23rd. I truly believe that Public Works is the front line of our public safety mission. If we don't have public works keeping our roads safe and in good repair, then the fire trucks don't have roads to, to ride on. Our citizens are certainly um, in a position to have an accident. Um, our law enforcement can't respond well. So we would like to um, highlight the, the good work of public works and what they do for our community. Uh, 
I see three blank lines there. Are you looking for suggestions for other things that yes, you could sir, have? Yes, sir. You'd like that. Certainly available. I think if the other commissioners were <clears throat> agreeable, um, we all probably have elementary schools in our district um, that we could all take. We could all take a trip to a an elementary school in our district and and talk to an elementary school class about local government. I agree with that. That's a good idea. It's just, you know, it be a, you know, try not to pour their eyeballs out because they're too young to really understand, but I think that, that getting involved, I mean, I, I have wanted us to have a youth-based program for some time now, and I think that, um, you know, letting students know what their county government does is not a bad thing, as long as you keep it short, keep it interesting. Obviously, we've got to work with the teachers and the Board of Education, and, um, April may be too soon, I don't know. Um, but that's something that I'd be interested in if we could make it happen. Sure, we can reach out for those contacts. And I actually have some PowerPoint presentations that are prepared for elementary, middle, and high school students that you can take with you if you like that give an overview of the history, the form of government that we have here in Lowndes County, our population, um, you know, it talks a little bit about voting and accountability um, and how we can come to a meeting and vote for policy that you all have. Even our eighth grade, you know, most of the eighth graders are taking Georgia history. That would be a great place for us to go and talk about it in the eighth grade Georgia history class. Uh, you know, you got more than enough middle schools that we could, and classes that we could take. That actually may be a better audience and a more appropriate audience, but you get the general idea. Yes, sir. I, I take your recommendation if you have one. Yes. I've been, I've been right on point. Uh, I was thinking more along the uh, eighth grade, maybe even high school. I think at one point I had to talk to Richard about having what we call a commissioner for a day program where we invite uh, possibly a student, an inspiring student, to, to uh, shadow uh, on the commissioners or the commission uh, a particular day. Uh, I would be open for that up for myself, for sure. I thought about that, and I think a good day to do that, if, if we can get that planned, would be the, the Tuesday that you all have the second meeting in April because that allows you to, if the students are available, take them through that morning and actually to the commission meeting. Because sometimes I think, it, you know, they don't understand the process until they see you actually take an action on what's considered the formality of that meeting. So if you'd like for us to see what's available for that, that Tuesday, if that's something calendar-wise that would work for some of you all, then we can certainly put that together. Okay, so when is, we need to check spring break too. Um, I think I know with five kids, but I really just wish my wife to tell me when it's spring break. Well, I'm tired as the summer. Mark, week of March 7th. Let's say get on the way a little bit more. I think I was just using that factor. That's like next week. Monday night, we're going to Joe came in to go about 
put Valdosta as a county seat, but the Board of Commissioners made that decision. Made the decision to move the troop bill to Valdosta. All that, that, that's, that would tie in with their glasses as well as what we did today. But actually, my history, if I remember right, Franklinville was actually. Franklinville was a county seat. It was first, and that was troop bill, and it came here. Well, there's a third choice. We are actively pursuing Hay Hire as a new county. I think we're the long time coming. The move to um, just a little quick trivia, real quick, related to what Commissioner Hay said for the, the move from Creekville to Valdosta was based on the railroad. railroad and the Historical Society has a great story about how the citizens at that time were looking you know, very much forward to the railroad coming through. So it was a homecoming. They packed picnic baskets, they came in and waited on the train. And when the train came through, it was so loud and not what they were expecting that many of them were, were scared and actually left the area because they just weren't sure what was going on um, with that train. So there's there's some things that we can pull together depending on the audience that you're speaking to as far as the students go that they find very interesting. We've got, uh, we've got about 10 minutes Page we need to get set up for her um, for her webinar. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of uh, move into goals by really just kind of uh, 